is in incredibly valuable. And the school year is off to a very busy start for many of you. So thank you for taking time to learn about um, our Ready, Check, Go program. What we hope to accomplish today during this session is three things. One, learning about us, who is Thermo Fisher Scientific and color, and how can we support you and your testing needs? And secondly, introduce our testing program called Ready, Check, Go. What is it? What, what is included in the program? Um, the ease of use that we'd like to demonstrate for all of you in, in taking that to your schools and districts. And then lastly, getting started. What do you do next? Uh, how do you reach out to us? Um, how do you engage and hopefully initiate a testing program using Ready, Check, Go? So those are our three goals today. And um, as mentioned, we hope to answer as many questions as we can at the end of the session. Please feel free to enter them into the chat. And we'll, we'll manage that with the TEA team um, as, as we can at the end, as, as well as a follow-up after this discussion. So without further ado, who is Thermo Fisher Scientific and Color? Um, we'll get through and I'll turn over to Caroline to speak to Color um, as she represents the, the team there. Thermo Fisher Scientific is likely a name that you've heard. Um, we are not only the world leader in serving science, but with respect to the COVID-19 pandemic, we, we are a global leader in COVID-19 testing. Uh, we feel um, extremely honored and humbled to have participated in supporting the pandemic response through a variety of different modalities, um, support. Some things you see here on the screen, we're, we're providing and running COVID tests. We're producing COVID tests. We're providing products to administer the tests, as well as bringing innovation to ensure we're being as competitive and available to the entire globe with respect to this pandemic. I'll turn it over to Caroline to speak about color. Thanks. Um, and so color, we have been providing uh, broad healthcare infrastructure to be able to basically roll out large healthcare programs in really untraditional settings, whether that is fields in uh, enterprises and employers, um, in faith-based organizations, as well as now in schools. We've worked with a huge variety of public health departments and state level programs, as well as schools over the course of the COVID pandemic in particular. Um, uh, as you can see here, we've also operated at a very large scale. We've run over 9 million tests through Colors infrastructure, software and programs. And we've worked with thousands of institutions now trying to really make uh, testing access in this pandemic easy, accessible and highly available no matter where people are. And I actually, I'll spend just 30 seconds actually talking about our experience in California because I think there's a lot of parallels here and we'll, we'll go through a bit more of the program uh, in more detail as well. But um, Color uh, has been working very closely with the Department of Public Days of, of, of COVID-19. We actually started a statewide school testing program there um, in January of this year. Um, we now are working with thousands of schools. We've run almost a million tests alone through the California school testing program. And really, again, like we try to make everything be extremely easy, extremely easy for families so that it's super simple for them to register and consent, very easy for schools so that there's no additional overhead on them, results come back in a timely fashion, and really easy for state public health departments to really understand what's going on and be able to act and follow up on cases that are happening in the community. Um, so we'll talk about a bit of this later, but we've had really great reception to the program and, and particularly because we focus on this availability and ease of use. Thanks, Caroline. So, so bringing us together, Thermo Fisher Scientific and Color have partnered to, to provide our Ready, Check, Go program with, with really two pillars. One is the testing um, product process tools, and then the color piece is really that ease of use with information, getting consent from parents, from students, um, reporting to public health agencies, in this case, working very closely with the state of Texas to communicate positivity rates and manage that information in a very seamless manner, um, in a very easy way, and we'll talk about more, but, but really this is um, the, the baseline of what we hope to, to share with everyone today. You know, our, our understanding and our empathy goes out to all of the schools with respect to the responsibilities that now weigh on your shoulders to bring students back to the classroom for those that have been in a, in a remote learning environment or a hybrid environment. Um, and so we want to focus on keeping that focus with keeping education first and foremost with schools. Um, we know that there is a lot of asks that have been happening. So um, if you don't remember anything else from the presentation, we want you to know that 
Um, we are here to make this as easy as possible for you to ensure that students are safe and healthy, remain in the classroom, and we can help you manage those issues appropriately. Some of the pieces that we'll talk about in more detail, but again, setting the stage, we have such experience that we wanna to bring to you to help make this as easy as possible, including our work with labs that help run the tests. If we're talking PCR, our on-site testing support with not only PCR, but antigen as well. And then using that information and an easy touch, easy to implement platform that makes it very seamless and, and very easy for not only administrators, districts to use to understand what's happening at the schools, but also for results to be communicated in a quick and efficient manner. And furthering that comment, thinking about what's important for our customers, in this case, schools, you know, what is important to you in terms of testing programs? And there's really two things we wanna elevate. One is, again, as we've mentioned, empowering teachers to focus on education, um, as, as that is the key goal of, of all of you. And secondarily, helping to maximize keeping kids in, in, the, in the classrooms um, to avoid quarantine, to avoid um, disruption to learning, which we all experienced last year and hope to minimize this coming school year. So what we can provide to help achieve those goals are, are twofold. Our ReadyCheck Go pro program includes, again, easy implementation, very quick processing time, regardless of the modality that you're using, and we'll speak more about that. And then really wanted to highlight our PCR testing. I know that the entire state of Texas has had exposure to antigen testing in the past year. So some of this is obviously new and we wanna help make that education um, very helpful as well as easy to understand. Um, PCR in many ways is a lot easier to administer than antigen, we'll talk about that uh, because it is a lot faster in some ways and, and less disruptive, uh, but we wanna provide options. So we wanna ensure that you're comfortable with whatever solution you partner with us upon um, and make sure that it's easy to understand, easy to implement, and most, most importantly, that you're comfortable with it. I'll turn it over to Terry. Um, a lot of this is best demonstrated in a video, um, which is easier to often digest than, than words on a page. We wanted to leave you with this and I'll, I'll start this off and, and Terry can speak to it afterwards. <laughs> All right, yeah, thank you very much for that video. Um, having a visual usually helps with the, with the program. So um, this was just a short video of, of basically helping us understand the, the ease of, of testing in no matter what modality you're using. So as you'll notice that we did uh, show, you know, swabs and nasal swabs, whether it's a rapid antigen or whether it's a PCR, they're both using a, um, a nasal swab, which is a simple and easy swab, just goes barely into the nose. We like to say two erasers deep. <laughs> That's an easy, easy way to remember how deep you have to go, which isn't very deep. Um, pencil erasers deep. I shouldn't say the big <laughs> pink ones. But uh, anyways, they, they just kind of go in and it's very easy. This uh, Our programs are, are self-administered, but they're they're under super uh, supervision. So um, whether that's a um, a nurse or or some other teacher or something like that, um, or even our own staff, we we can work uh, work through the the particular program. So really easy um, for uh, to implement. So if we go to the next slide, before we kind of dive into the the different programs. Um, we do have two programs, as you know, and, and probably seen. We have a PCR testing program and we have a rapid antigen testing program. And the reason why we're providing both is, is not that one is necessarily better than the other, but yet we need to think of this as the, the, the kind of the morphology of the, the virus itself and how um, outbreaks happen, how the virus uh, is transmitted and things of that nature. And as most of you might know, the, the virus will start off at a, at a low amount of virus. So when you're when you first get exposed, you may not be showing symptoms because the virus is not at a level that A, can make you sick, or B, that can be detected. But as that virus continues to mute, uh, not mutate, but to, um, to, to grow within your body and to, and to get uh, more and more virus, then that virus load goes up. And as you can see by these different boxes, the blue is, is non-symptomatic, but we really can't 
we really can't detect you know, a, a lot. There are some modalities that can, PCR is one. And then you start to show symptoms. And then of course, um, once you show symptoms, then the next modality of an antigen testing can pick it up. So you can kind of see this linear progression of where the different technologies can pick up the virus. Now, the reason why we wanted to show this and, and why this is important is because what we're trying to do at Thermo Fisher is trying to help keep kids in school. How do we do that? We keep um, the spread of the virus as low as possible. So antigen testing is a great test to pick up symptomatic patients. So if they are showing symptoms, it's a great test. PCR will also do the same thing. But one of the advantages of PCR will allow you to pick up cases earlier than with antigen. And therefore, you could um, get students that might be asymptomatic, not necessarily shedding a lot of virus yet. You could help them to um, be removed from the schools uh, to isolate and then hopefully cut down on the amount of virus that is transmitting through your schools. So it's kind of a, it's a complementary program. It's not really one or the other. It's very much a complementary program. And we've seen that in Washington um, with community screening and, and, and basically identifying positives earlier helps reduce the risk of virus being brought into schools. So um, that's kind of the nutshell of a version of why we have both and how we would, how we can help you um, implement these to keep your kids in, in, their, in your schools. Thank you, Terry. So let's get into a little bit more of what uh, we're offering so we can depict some specifics around the testing program that we've, we've set the stage for. So as Terry mentioned, a complementary program is what we're, what we're providing um, with two pieces, one being PCR, one being antigen. And PCR comes in a, a few different flavors, if you will. One is a source pooled test, which is more of a screening test as Terry depicted, trying to understand those that are asymptomatic, how we're managing the spread of the virus across the schools. Um, and that's done through the short swabs that we saw in the video, um, pulled on site with six swabs in one tube. And then the individual PCR where you're doing uh, one test, um, one swab, one tube. They're both run you know, at, this, at the same lab. They're run with the same process with the results within 24 to 48 hours um, and highly sensitive tests uh, with respect to symptomatic or asymptomatic. The antigen test is what most of you are likely familiar with from a school setting, but for potentially for from a personal setting. If anyone you know, in your family has been exposed, you could pick up some of these tests at a local drugstore or even um, have those administered at, at your local you know, doctor's office. And these are the quick rapid tests that um, usually are resulting between 15 and 30 minutes. Um, not as sensitive, but, but time is, of course, uh, one of the benefits of those, those tests. And we are offering a number of different types of antigen tests. So um, if you're interested in that, please reach out to us and we'll provide that information to, to provide specifics on what types of tests. We know many of you are familiar with the Avid Binax Now test that was provided last year. Um, we do not have that test as part of our portfolio. Um, but we have a lot of similarities, so we can walk you through what, what those entail if, if that's of interest. Also, what Terry mentioned, we have on-site support. So many of the nurses across um, the state have been supporting some of the testing activities or other administrators within the districts. Um, we recognize that that is a heavy lift for some. Um, and as such, we can provide on-site support to um, as you would need it to, to support the, the administration of the programs that we've described here. So that is the what of, of our program. Um, I'll turn it over to, to Terry to talk a little bit more in specifics around the PCR test. I'll speak to the antigen and then we'll um, talk about how the software works and, and how to get started with the program. Great, thank you. So so the, the kind of the, of the specifics um, with the particular PCR programs is we have more of a surveillance program, and this is what we call a, a pod pool. It's not necessarily um, needed for this discussion, but what it means is, is we're going to take six swabs and we're going to swab six individual students or, or staff, and then we're going to take those six swabs and we're going to put them into one tube, and then we're going to send that tube off to the laboratory. The laboratory then runs that particular test and then reports back um, that, that particular group of six, whether it's positive or negative. The advantages of this particular test is the fact that you can get a lot, a lot of people tested in a short amount of time, and it's very inexpensive. As a surveillance or a screening test, 
Uh, most of these should be negative, but what happens is, is, is because you are screening and can screen a lot of people, you can find those uh, asymptomatic cases very quickly and efficiently and then um, really kind of stop the spread uh, of, of COVID as it, as it spreads throughout the school. These results are also still 24 to 48 hours, uh, and the program um, of doing you know, these six swabs is just as easy as doing one swab. If we can move to the next slide. You can kind of see this is what is kind of um, in the package for on-site pooling. Um, and this basically you'll receive, you know, swabs, a tube, you'll put the tube, the swabs into the tube after they're sampled, they'll send them to the lab, and then you'll get the resort results. We'll talk about the software and how that works. Um, if you move to the next slide, this just kind of gives an example of what you'd be receiving in this type of of an example, there would be a box, and in that box would contain the materials for the on-site pooling um, option. Um, a, a tube, there'd be multiple tubes, but you'd have six swabs to a tube, you'd have a return package and have FedEx labels. So one of the um, things that we will provide in all of our um, PCR options is prepaid FedEx um, labels and envelopes so that it will get to the, um, to the lab without any further, any further cost. All of that cost is included in the program. And then the results will come back through the um, software program through Color Health, um, either through text or email. Uh, and then a link to the site to where they can get their, their, their result. So if you move to the next slide, um, same idea with a single swab um, for PCR. Uh, this single swab for PCR would be used as a reflex test or as a test that could be used for those six students that were in that on-site pooling that have, uh, may, be net, may be positive. You could then have them use this test, single swab, single tube, single individual result. This can also be used um, in a variety of other ways, whether it's to confirm an antigen test or whether it's um, designed for you know, a repeat test of some sort, or you could just use it as this is your test of choice. We're gonna do one swab, PCR is the most sensitive, and so therefore we're gonna use, uh, use this. Same scenario, if you move to the next, the next slide, box is very, very similar. In the contents, you'll see um, there would be one swab, one tube, and a return um, or biohazard bag along with all the prepaid uh, FedEx shipping labels. And again, the result for this um, individual PCR test would be given um, through a test, uh, through, through a text or email. So yes, that was a good segue. We Thanks, Terry. But... <laughs> a quick, quick draw there on the antigen test. So antigen testing, um, again, many of you familiar with this, it is a rapid test uh, administered um, on-site typically or for symptomatic patients or students that might present in the nurse's office. Um, many of you might have done these at home as well or in a doctor's office, but similar to the, the video, um, including sample collection through the short nasal swab that is usually put into either a solution or um, a reader to determine the presence of COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2, um, in a quick fashion, whether it's a linear test similar to the Abbott Binax now, or again, a cartridge similar to the other options. Benefits here are, of course, they're quick. Um, you can quickly discern potentially uh, through someone that's presenting with symptoms if they are um, positive, and if so, how you can disposition them, send them home, or keep them home in a quarantine scenario if you'd like to verify with PCR. That's obviously a secondary option. Um, and the samples are collected individually. So again, as I mentioned, we have a number of different tests that, that are When you do reach out, we can provide more specifics about what you've been familiar with or some of the pros and cons, uh, as well as volume, so we can ensure we can provide those tests for you. So what do we do now? Uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about how we get started. And you know, some of this is, has been uh, established thus far in terms of the tenants of the program. So it's a simple, seamless process. We wanted to call out that there is bilingual consent and registration. Um, so that I know is important across the state of Texas. Um, so both English and Spanish are available in all the materials that we would support the schools with. Uh, whether it be training materials, uh, consenting, all of the details that Caroline will, will detail. But obviously with any testing program uh, and something new, there are going to be questions. So through that, we have really ex extensive and robust training and support, whether it be videos or live support that we can provide through email, phone, et cetera, 
to ensure that everyone is comfortable or if there are questions, if you're engaged in a program, parents have questions about results, they have questions about the forms, there's resources that are available for, for the schools as well as the students and parents to ensure everyone's comfortable. And then from a logistics perspective, this is very light touch. It can be very light touch if, if that's how you want to run your program. Um, as depicted by the video, flight staff, you know, with respect to supporting the administration collection, um, the kits are very simple to order. We saw some pictures of what they look like, what's in them, as Terry highlighted. With respect to the PCR program, everything you put into a box and you ship that's already pre-labeled with FedEx goes right to our lab. Results are delivered um, through SMS or, or email with respect to the results. So there isn't a very cumbersome or very extensive presence that would be needed at the school um, necessarily to help run the program. And, and with respect to timing, how long does this take to get set up at your schools? A couple details here that we wanted to highlight. Five days or less, we can do the sign-up process, which includes getting some details around what type of testing you're planning to do at your school, onboarding your school, so details around how many physical schools are in, in the district, are you doing the whole district, um, where are you running the tests, et cetera. Make sure that we order the supplies to get that first week or two weeks started, or depending on how, um, how long of supply you'd like to have on hand. And then working through the setup around testing administrators, the training, um, ensure that the collection sites are set up and everything's ready for registration, which is step three, where we communicate to the school community what is happening, uh, what to expect and how to engage such that parents and or students that are um, 18 can register and consent such that they'd be eligible for testing on school property or, or wherever we're doing that. And that's, again, that's about, that first part is about five days. And then the actual collection, once you get everything set up, it's, it's extremely quick. Um, you can work through, you know, let's say you're doing testing once a week, you have that established, uh, you're doing that one day, and then the results are going out um, through the FedEx boxes that we highlighted. It can be done incredibly quickly. Um, and then the results, are, again, the window that we provided are, are extremely, extremely quick turnkey, you know, 24 to 48. Um, and then again, the, the support exists throughout the process, because as we start up these programs, there are questions and we want to ensure that everyone's comfortable with with each step along the way. Um, with respect to you know, the, first, the first step around sign up, some of the materials that you will receive, we wanted to provide some visuals around what those look like. Um, we don't simply ship you materials and hope you figure it out. There's a, lot, there's a welcome kit that we provide and we'll walk everyone through that with respect to schools around um, sample communications, signage for your schools, instructions um, and other posted details that you might wanna have to help ensure everyone is, is comfortable and understand what to do with respect to the program. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Caroline and, and I um, hope all of you will be um, as excited as we are about how easy this is to use around the software. So Caroline. Absolutely, and I, I've seen a couple of questions about this that I'll try to answer as I, I walk through. Um, so effectively, I'm just gonna cover like registration, sample collection, and then what resulting in reporting looks like. So if you haven't been running a program before registration or you have and you're, you're, you're working with, um, with this program, registration is very easy. Effectively, every school receives a, um, a unique uh, link. Uh, family members access that link and they just go through a very fast, uh, simple registration and consent process. So you can see here on the left, this is effectively where they put in their contact information uh, as a parent on behalf of a child. And then they complete a consent as well as a HIPAA authorization, which is allowing us as a HIPAA compliant entity, healthcare service company, to be able to share those results back legally and securely with the schools. Um, this process takes under a minute. Um, actually, the ease of use, the bilingual access is something that we've seen really drives family adoption and opt-in um, and makes it just feel, uh, you know, simple, secure, easy, um, and like no big deal to, to family members who may be participating. So what would happen next um, is uh, the results process, but I'll very briefly touch on sample collection, whether that is for a PCR test or an antigen test. So effectively, um, all of those individuals are eligible to be tested. And I've seen some questions about, you know, like labeling on tubes. It's actually much simpler than that. We've made it so that it's an extremely efficient sample collection process, no matter the testing model. Um, everything is pre-barcoded, everything's pre-labeled. So nobody has to write any PHI on a tube or anything like that. Effectively, a student is checked in, 
their sample is collected and that is tested. And then that's what transmits through. So everybody that is being tested, you know that they're eligible, you know that they've consented, and there's a very simple association mechanism that makes it so that we don't have any sample swap or any PHI issues, and it makes it very, very efficient on site. So that's sample collection. And then I'll turn here to registration and what it looks like to actually communicate this back to families as well as to schools. So everything we do, we can, we can um, alert people by text message. We found that that is particularly important in a lot of communities where there may be limitations on like laptops at home or anything like that. So a text message would go to the guardian, um, letting them know that uh, results are ready. So you can see this is a text message that we send. They then click through and they're able to input uh, uh, their child's date of birth and um, securely as a result of this link, the secure link that they receive, view the results. We make the results very simple and easy to understand. So this is actually a summary view whether again, that's for an antigen test or a PCR test, they can see a summary view just on a mobile phone, again, in either English or Spanish. Um, and it's very clear what the result is. Um, we also give them the clinical report as well, which they can download as a PDF file if they need it for any records. What happens then is in terms of um, uh, communication back to the schools, I don't know if we actually, I think that's the next page. Um, so I'll, I'll save that for uh, a minute here, but um, uh, uh, in terms of results back to the schools, um, there's dashboards that are available to every school. Those dashboards are effectively real time. They're updating so that you can actually see the program at a summary level. You can see how many individuals have registered, how many of uh, samples that have been collected, demographic breakdowns, things like that, that we find a lot of schools really need to focus on to manage their programs. And then there's also a view that gives you individual level results. Again, this is fully HIPAA compliant. Everything is securely transmitted. And this information can also be downloaded into a CSV file or an Excel file that can be uploaded into any other student information systems you know, that you may have. We've seen a lot of schools really need that sort of flexibility of the data return. Um, and that all is also happening and getting transmitted to the school at effectively the same time that parents and guardians are being notified. So schools should always be up to date with this information. That's really critical so that if a parent calls a school, they know what's going on. So in terms of the support then that this also is, um, you know, again, like having worked with, I think, you know, in California alone, over 2000 schools across the entire country, you know, in states like Louisiana and Ohio um, and Illinois, we've worked with thousands and thousands of school administrators. Um, we, you know, we are, we, 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 live, we, live, we live what your lives must, must be like a lot just through working with so many uh, superintendents, principals, staff members across the country. Um, we have uh, uh, ongoing phone-based as well as email-based support for you as a school. So you can call anytime with questions, write us with questions or to ask for support from a technical perspective or otherwise. We hold office hours, which we'll talk about to make it so that schools feel very well supported and your teams and your staff also know what to, what to expect. We provide um, uh, also um, obviously the on-site support that Mackenzie's mentioned. Um, we also have done a lot uh, around how we actually support you in communicating with families. Um, we see a lot of questions from family members. What is testing about? You know, how about privacy? We have actually like ready-made kind of FAQs and program materials to make sure that family members are also feeling very secure and so that you can actually, you don't have to build all those communications from scratch. Um, and then also for patients, this is a really important one. So for families, for, for students, they can also call, we have a dedicated patient support line, participant support line as well, operate seven days a week, phone, email, um, and we help people with questions about their results or, uh, you know, troubleshooting um, or if they have technical difficulties. I think those central support uh, systems have actually been very important in making this a really sustainable thing for all the schools that we support across the country. Um, and I think what you'll see here is just a couple of highlights of our work. And we point this out because I think like the, you know, as, as we've mentioned before, like we know that this is additional, this is something that like nobody really expect, expected to probably have to, you know, incorporate into their school days. And I think what we really focus on is how do we make this just, how do we take off as many of the problems of testing as possible and make it easy for family members and easy for schools? Those are the two key things. How fast is it? How efficient is it? 
And I think that like the way that we have um, supported these goals and the track record that we have is, you know, we've built a lot of new best practices into the system. We're constantly learning from the schools that we support. Um, and speed is very important, how quickly we can respond and how quickly we can, um, we can you know, deliver results, how quickly we can support you in, in you know, these times when, when things are very dynamic. Um, so we've gotten great reception to the program and um, uh, across really diverse types of districts from rural to, to urban um, uh, across the board. So Mackenzie, I'll turn it back over to you in terms of next steps and, um, and where we go from here. Thanks, Caroline. So this is our last slide and I think we'll have a decent amount of time for questions. So excited to answer as many as we can. And, and hopefully we've, we've been able to depict um, some details and, and criteria around our testing program that give you enough information or interest to continue the dialogue with us, which is what we hope for, for this to be um, just the beginning. And for those that have, um, already connected with us. Thank you so much for your interest. We're working through, uh, we've, we've received a ton of, of inquiries. So we're working through responding to you as quickly as possible. So thank you for your patience, um, but really highlight again, some ways to connect with us. Um, we have an email address here, which will help us triage your inquiries. If you wanna order, if you're ready to roll, um, or you just have a question around, I'd like to learn more about antigen tests, what, what types do you have? Or I'm interested in PCR, can you help me you know, understand how that might work in my school? Please contact us at safeandhealthyschools at thermofisher.com. Um, that's the best way to connect with us. So we'll respond to you from, from there. Um, you can also uh, visit our, our site specific to readycheckgo, thermofisher.com forward slash readycheckgo. Uh, but as, as Caroline mentioned, we recognize there will be a lot of questions and, and your time is valuable. So we've established um, office hours, if you will, uh, which are weekly, um, every Thursday at noon central time. There's a link here, so we'll um, hopefully publish this in the chat. If not, I'll leave behind for everyone to have reference. Please join if you have, you know, if, if you have that time open and you want to ask us any question. This is a totally open forum. It's for us to provide information to you, um, and we want that to be, be accessible as well. So we're looking forward to continuing um, learning about you and your schools, how we can help you, as well as how uh, we can best um, support the testing needs across the state of Texas. So with that, um, we will open it up for questions and we'll, we'll let the TEA team uh, maybe guide us and, and we can address questions that we don't get to um, after the fact. Thank you guys very much for that. Uh very informative webinar. So yeah, we'll start off. It looks like we have 23 open questions right now. And we'll just kind of go down the list. Um, that way we try to answer as many live as possible. If there are any that you do not have the answer to, or we don't have the answer to, we'll compile them into the FAQ. Uh, and so this is, seems to be a common theme here with the on-site support. So like, what's the turnaround time to ask for help? If I have an outbreak at a football team, I may want to pool test the next day. Do you have staffing to help with the quick turnaround? And I've seen that question a couple of times as far as what does on-site support really look like? How broad and can you actually support? So uh, can y'all touch on that a little bit, Mary? Sure. Um, the on-site support, so I'll answer it in a few different ways. We could bring folks on between five and 10 days. I think it also depends on what background checks that district might have. Every district has a little bit different background check practice that we've learned through our experience. So, you know, between um, our, our background checks as well as yours, we wanna, that's usually the, the limiting factor. So. That's a key upfront question. I would say five to 10 days. In terms of scaling, we can have one person, we could have a hundred people. So it really depends on what your district looks like and what you're trying to do um, in terms of a testing program. Is it situational? So it was mentioned, you know, an outbreak um, for, or, you know, you're preparing for homecoming and you want to get people tested. That's certainly available as well. Um, as well as a routine testing program where you're maybe doing screening testing Mondays and Tuesdays or, you know, a different days of the week. So um, hopefully that answered the question, but there's a lot of different ways that we can apply it based on your needs at the school. All right, and you answered the question regarding uh, labels. It's all done through QR codes and everything. Yep. Um, how long does it take for supplies to arrive once ordered? Usually I would say three to five days, um, depending on what you're ordering. So we do have a, a local warehouse and multiple warehouses in Texas. 
um, Fisher Scientific, as well as some of our other locations. So we do have a, a large presence in the state of Texas, which we can deploy hopefully a little sooner than that, but um, erring on the side of caution just to be um, transparent. So I got a question here. Is an app going to be made for a recording test given to students? Now, they're not actually giving the test to students, are they? That's not the intent. Can you repeat? You It broke so, up just on my end. Is there an app going to be made for recording tests given to students? Um, I'm assuming that somewhere they're under the impression that they're going to give the, the test to students and like let them leave with it. But I don't think that's the intent here. It's to do self-testing on site, correct? That is correct. Okay. So the administrators or testing uh, coordinator will have to still scan it. Yeah, doing an at-home test is not in scope for the state program. Correct. All right. Uh, please speak to those of us who prefer antigen testing and already have our consent forms and scheduling processes in place district-wide. How would we upload the test results? That's, again, through the scanning and website, correct? Yeah, I mean, we we are promoting the color platform because that's how we're doing all of our testing. So um, if you have a supply of product that you want to use, we can certainly take advantage of that. We would We would hopefully want to use our program because that allows us to do consolidated and seamless reporting to the state, which is part of the, the requirements as we understand them uh, for the program. And we've got a couple of questions here dealing with guardians in, in the system. So the first one is um, this district is bordering Mexico and a lot of their parents have Mexican phone numbers. Uh, how do, will they receive the results? Can you text internationally and, and provide that update to them still? That is a great question. Um, let me actually follow up on that. Um, if you would love, if you'd like to email any of us um, uh, at the email address here, or I'm Caroline at color.com, let me follow up on that and figure out how we would make sure we support that. And if you get that, we can also include that in our FAQ for you guys as well. Great, thank you. Um, and then, a, kind of with the system question as well, how many guardians does the system allow for? We know some of our kiddos have quite a few people. Yeah, so currently we we support one guardian per student um, and that's around there's a lot of reasons for that around like uh, who can receive results we're trying to make sure again that everything is like extremely HIPAA compliant and that we're not sending results to places that are not um, allowed so currently we support one guardian per student. Um, if someone doesn't do an initial consent, but a few months later decide they want a consent for their child who's responsible for that consent is it just through the website. Yeah, so the, basically these registration links can be made available and open and available to people as long as you as the school want to do so. Um, what we do see is we see individuals, uh, we see like, you know, a number of, of families opt in early, sometimes like a month or so later, if there may be some situation at the school or they're more comfortable with the program, another batch opt in. So it's basically open and eligible for people to register and consent at any time based on the policy that you set. Um, and at that point, uh, they would register and consent their child at home, or if they're bringing them on site, you know, we can give you a QR code that makes it so that individuals can register right there with their parents. Um, and then we also have supported uh, some other situations in the past, but that's primarily how it works. Yeah. Ask a quick question um, to go along with that, that I've had uh, schools ask me, uh, Carolyn, with, uh, with the consent, is it a one-time consent or do we have to consent every single time that we're gonna get a, going to get a test? Yeah, it's a really good question. We do get that question a lot. Um, it's a one-time consent um, for the for a six-month period. And so we've made it so that it's not additional. Basically, once you're consented and eligible, you can continue on any kind of screening cadence and it's really easy. Um, yeah, we've, we've tried to remove as much of the friction as possible for families so that it's not a burden. Who are the labs in Texas that could test for PCR? That just goes through your, your labs and partnerships, correct? Yeah, Terry, do you wanna take that one? Yes, I'm happy to, yeah. So um, the particular labs, we have labs all throughout the country. We are currently working with a lab in Austin, Texas that we're going to get um, signed on and, and, and started here shortly. They, they have started their process. They do, they've run our tests for a long time. They know about our testing processes. It's just a matter of getting them integrated um, with with our pro
going to guarantee that 24 to 40, 48 hour turnaround time. All the labs that we have are labs that have high volume, high capacity, um, who've been running um, COVID tests for pretty much the duration of the, of the pandemic. Thanks, Terry. And, and uh, can younger children five to eight swab themselves or will an adult need to swab? So children will be able to swab themselves um, if there's there's a lot of training, um, as I mentioned before. Um, and if there's staffing, that's another resource to help um, guide the students. It's the video I think was very, hopefully very impactful for the audience. Um, and we've been doing this where students have been swabbing themselves um, as young as you know kindergarten with without any issues. So we would want to support the same model um, for this for the state of Texas as well. Um, if a PCR test is needed, how quickly would someone from Thermo Fisher be able to arrive at campus to perform the test? So if there is staffing that is required, we would want to set that up. But in terms of a self-administered PCR, we could have that available um, within a day if necessary to, to get that done. And then, of course, there would be the 24 to 48 turnaround. So it's, it's very easy to, to implement and does not necessarily require someone to go on site to help manage that. And if I could just add a little bit to that, I mean, the, the idea that we're trying to try to do here is, is obviously we want to support support everybody that we can with our staffing, but we're also trying to make the program easy enough that in those off cases that a one off would need to be done or, a, or, or something of that nature that the program is easy enough to self administer and. Um, you know, I think, you know, some of the programs and some of the districts, there may be staffing that we're providing to a, a, a different site that could that could be used. Um, you know, for a different program. But again, the, the, the idea is, is trying to make this as simple as possible so that it's not hard for, for any sort of test to be run. Let's see here. Um, how many people do you test when pulling a campus? Um, I can answer that, but to clarify, how many people are we looking at? How many people at a time or how many people would be needed to make a pooling process applicable? It didn't stay. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll answer both of them. Um, you know, when we're doing a pooling, um, a pooling type process, an on-site um, pooling process, it's designed for screening. And so it's designed to test as many people as, as possible. The minimum number of people that would need to be screened would be at one time would be six because we, we put, well, be five or six, and you can actually put three in there if you wanted to. But the best, the, the, the highest economic value is if you put six in at one time. So the minimum amount, let's just say, is six people at, at one time. But with that, these, uh, these kits come with multiple tubes and multiple swabs so that you can do, um, you can do 300 kids at, at one time or 300 tests at one time. So um, depending on you know, where you want to go and how you want to do it, uh, you know, it can be as minimal as six or it can be as high as you know, your whole school district. Thank you. A couple more questions around pooling, uh, PCR pool versus positive and the rest is negative. The swabs are lab labeled individually with student demographics, correct? So you can test individually, I'm assuming? So you can test individually. Now, the pooled process itself, as of right now, is the, the individual swabs are not labeled individually. Um, the, when we do the on-site pooling, we, the software will keep track of who is in that pool. So the swabs all go into one tube. That tube is labeled as one test, but there's six um, tests within that, six students or, or, or staff within that. When the results come back, the results in the, in the on-site pooling would be those six students would be reported as positive or negative. If they are negative, all six students are fine. If they're positive, then um, a reflex test would, would be necessary, but it's also, designed to be like, okay, here, here's six students that we should, we should focus on. And, uh, and then you can get those uh, students retested. Thank you. And can you elaborate on the difference between a lab pooled and source pooled? Yes, you bet. Um, so a source pooled or on-site pooling is done on site. It's the, the pooling is actually the six swabs are actually put into one particular tube. 
at the site of testing. When we do lab-based pooling, lab-based pooling is different. Lab-based pooling takes an individual swab, puts it into an individual tube, and then those five or six tubes are sent to the laboratory. The laboratory will then take those five or six tubes and pool them into one tube to be run. When that, when that tube, when that answer comes back, um, on the source pool or the on-site pooling, you have one answer for six students. On the lab-based pooling, because we have an individual swab, when we get a positive on that pool, we will then retest all six students individually and then report back to the students if they're positive or negative. So it's just a difference in, in A, how we collect the devices and send them to the laboratory, and then B, on the back end, what we have available for um, reporting. All right, so I want to I want to go ahead and hop in and answer a couple of clarifying questions that I'm seeing in here regarding just the overall testing program, and that may help um, clarify things for some of these uh, districts. So, um, is the program and supplies free to the schools? So, if you have already opted in, or if you're part of the previous testing program, let me make it clear that this is different. So, we had uh, our previous testing program was aligned through TDM and Abbott Labs, and it was all Abbott Lab uh, rapid testing. That ended, Abbott Labs and TDM ended that um, on October 15th. So October 16th, we started this new testing uh, project that we have aligned with various vendors, uh, Thermo Fisher being one of them. So if you are aware of a school that was previously included in the prior testing program, or you have opted into this new testing program, you will receive an allocation based on district information and, and enrollment and things like that. From there, you are utilized, you are allowed to use that allotment amount for any of the vendors that we have eligible for this project. Um, so it is up to the school district itself to, to look at their allocation, determine what kind of test they need uh, through the vendors they need to see fit. Um, with that, this is currently only uh, supplying testing kits. Um, and the software that goes along with that, any PPE, there, let me rephrase that, there is not any PPE um, supported or supplied during this in, uh, event. There is going to be another grant coming out that you, sh you should be able to uh, use to, to support PPE purchases with. And Diane can hop in there if I am incorrect with any of that information. Um, and that has been Check the Health. Um, public health guidance site on TEA, and that should have more information on those additional grant opportunities. Let's see what we have here. I'm interested in turnkey system. If we hire a Thermo Fisher and their staff, what pieces do you not handle? I'm trying to get an idea of the workload that would be left for the district to handle. Back to you guys. A great question. So if the turnkey would be, you know, again, all of the testing materials, depending on what testing you're doing, the staff to help administer that on site, including, you know, collecting the samples, putting them in the boxes, et cetera. So where the school comes in is helping communicate with the parents and just the district, what is happening. So partnering with us on communication to ensure that that link is, is out there that, that Caroline spoke about to do the registration consenting. Um, we need information from the district around, you know, size, population, um, where we can physically be on site. So some of those kind of logistical things we would need to partner with the school, um, knowing who to send results to and, and what type of information from the dashboard you'd like to understand and, and know and manage. Um, so those types of pieces, you know, again, more logistical, administrative is where the school would be critical for us to be successful together. Um, Caroline, did I miss anything from your view? Uh, no, I think that that's, that's correct. Yeah, it's, it's very lightweight on the schools. Okay, thank you. Uh, are tests being delivered directly to the campuses or are they delivered to the district and then district has to parse them out? It, whatever the school wants, we could ship directly to schools. We could ship to in the larger districts. Often they're central receiving and they disseminate it. It, it, it's up to the school. Uh, let's see. Um, our, where that question go? There's another question. Uh, 
What if a parent does not sign into the program? Can we register them with a verbal parent permission? I, I don't think so, Caroline. We we need we need the authorization. We need all of the HIPAA compliance pieces. Unfortunately, I would I would think so as well. Yeah, correct. Does that apply to students and staff, meaning 18 and over or 18 and younger? Correct. Anyone that is going, wants to be eligible for testing has to go through the consenting process, either a guardian or an individual if you're 18 or over. Caroline, if I- That's correct, yes. Anything, please add. Yeah, exactly. A consent and a HIPAA authorization is required um, for us to remain HIPAA compliant and also to ensure that we're getting informed consent for anybody that's testing, um, which is, you know, important to the security of the program overall. Will staff collecting samples be expected to um, earn a training as a test administrator? I'm assuming I, the question is, is there a certification or training that the staff will have to go through on the campus level in order to there is training that happens, but in terms of a certification, there's nothing from our side that we issue. Um, some individuals and, you know, from staffing companies do have their own credentials, but we're not providing a certification per se uh, to be a, a, a staffing uh, lead for our program. Hi. Um, so kind of Within the four hour window, I have two questions here. Uh, I'll just kind of double them up. Can on site staff commute between campuses within the four hours? And then the second question regarding the four hours is Is there a minimum or maximum number of tests your on site staff would complete in the minimum four hours of on site support? Um, so the first part, yes, a staffer could go between multiple buildings within a district within the four hours. That's fine, um, assuming you know, the distance is meaningful that they could get from site to site and be effective in what they're trying to do. And the second part of the question, um, there's no minimum. Um, oftentimes you expect, you know, 20 students to come test and maybe there's only six that come. Um, oftentimes that's situational, but um, it's just the minimum time that they're required to be um, on the clock per se. Uh, will the labs be checking the PCR test for any of the variants? Um, the PCR tests are not detecting any of the variants. This is just strictly a COVID um, assay. Um, so it's not specifically for variants. It'll determine if, if COVID is present or not. Um, because this is a, a PCR test, um, it's not sequencing. Sequencing is usually used to determine the variants. Um, and so our test is as of as it stands right now is specifically for determining a positive or negative COVID-19 uh, case in all its variations. Can you please discuss the rapid test you offer and the information about including validity? Yeah, so there's there's a number of options. Um, we will share that directly if, if that's okay, um, just because there's a lot of detail and I will get through it in five minutes. Is biohazard disposal offered for antigen tests? Not at this time. Do, we, do they need to have a coordinator on each campus like TDM required? It's not required, but we do need what we're calling a district administrator to help be that point person. Um, and again, depends on what type of testing program you're standing up, but we need someone, our team needs someone to engage with just to make sure we can work through any issues that um, are gonna be present as we stand up the program or ongoing. Well, any type of technology provided to the district for the nurses to be able to report results? So that is, um, so recording results, that would be antigen. So the color platform does have that capability. Um, we could go into a little bit more detail. I can ask Caroline to speak to that. 
Um, but in terms of PCR, that's all done in the back end. It would be communicated through um, to the guardian or or individual if it's a staff member, as well as the as the district administrator to understand whether there's positivity and, and further information shared. Will the school send the swabs directly to the lab directly? Yes. Currently we're reporting all positives to TEA in our local health department. Does this program require a third reporting form slash system? And if so, do you handle that? Caroline, do you wanna take that one? That's a good question. Um, actually, we should probably follow up on that with, uh, with um, TEA and with DISHES. So the way that we um, support this now is that everything that is reported through the color system, whether again, that's PCR or antigen, will be reported to dishes as well as to the state reporting system, which then filters down to the local health department. So if there's an additional reporting requirement, um, we would love to understand that and we can work to figure out the right way to support. Uh, yeah, and for clarification, uh, districts still need to follow uh, all TDA yeah. guidelines as far, and, and health guidelines as far as the reporting of that goes to the state level. Do any of your rapid antigen tests provide results in less than an hour? Yes. Just as a teaser, you know, there's there's a few varieties. Again, more details to follow, but BD, Quidel, and and um, Intellish are some of the ones that we have. So I can get into a little bit more specifics um, as a follow up, but. They're all under an hour results. If the district commits to antigen tests, is the portal to communicate to guardians also included in the pricing? Yes. The antigen price is the test and the software. So in my district, when we set up testing, they did not want to test indoors. So if I hear correctly, this is more screening and not symptomatic. Is that correct? So it's both. Um, we can provide testing that will support either situation. Yeah, and we have to with that, with that, sorry, with that, um, antigen testing is is primarily symptomatic, but PCR can be used either way. So PCR could definitely be symptomatic. You could use a PCR test over an antigen test for symptomatic, or you could use it for asymptomatic. So it provides both um, both scenarios. Thank you. And uh, with that, we are at time. This is four o'clock. So if we did not get around to your question in the Q&A session, then we will co compile all these into an FAQ and post this along with the slide deck and recording um, at the end of, by the end of the week. Thank you, uh, Thermo Fisher and team, for joining us today. And uh, we will see you guys later. Thank you so much for the chance. We'll speak to everyone soon, hopefully. Thank you.